Volume 2 is also pretty grand. <laughs> Hey guys, this is my review for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, a film that I've been very much looking forward to. I was a very big fan of the original Guardians of the Galaxy, a film that I thought was almost a perfect ride, aside from a weak villain. At least to say, this film actually has a really good villain. Thing is, I can't talk about it at all, because something that I'm very happy for is that the trailers literally reveal nothing. Now, unless you've read the comics and you know of the characters in this film, maybe you might have an inclination of what's gonna happen, but otherwise, they haven't revealed anything, and it's really good. So, in this film, the Guardians are kind of finishing up a job on this planet full of golden douchebags. They piss off the douchebags because Rocket steals something, and then they leave, they try to escape, and then I can't say anything more after that. Literally, Everything afterwards I would be spoiling, and I don't want to spoil it for you because I will give this film credit. It does something pretty out there. Now, obviously, the Guardians of the Galaxy comics is already something that's quite out there. They have a talking raccoon. But this goes in a direction that actually is a solid 40, 30, 40 minutes, I would say, of almost no action. It's talking. And... Now, while some people might be a little bit upset with that, it works in this sense because James Gunn is again doing something that is different from the norm, the Marvel norm. Now, unfortunately, there are some Marvel trademarks that do sneak their way in, but Gunn tries his best to differentiate himself, and he actually delves even more into these characters. A little bit too much if there is one issue I would say with this film. There is a truckload of emotional exposition moments. And at first they were okay, and then they just kept coming and coming and coming. Now, I obviously want to not stress that this was a game-breaking moment, but the fact that there's so many, obviously Gunn is trying to de dwell deeper into these characters and show their emotional factors, their weaknesses, and their connections, which was good, but it just kind of just dumped it on a little bit that's honestly my biggest complaint with this film is there's too many of these moments and there's just they're so cheesy after a while but otherwise the humor is on point dave batista's drax is even better in this film than he was in the first one because they really make use of his humor and he's fantastic and his and his and Mantis's banter back and forth is fantastic. Rocket is a cool character. He actually has a little bit more of this darkness to him. Groot, okay, Groot doesn't really do anything in this movie. He's just cute in every single scene that he's in. And you know what? I didn't get tired of that. Gamora and Quill, they have they actually kind of make a joke about what their relationship is and Quill even calls it out. Again, this movie is just like the first one for being extremely meta, and I appreciated that. The soundtrack is, once again, very jivey. The only thing I would say is maybe not all the songs are instant dance numbers for me like they were for the first one. Mind you, the first one had absolutely fantastic hits. This one, he kind of goes over a little bit more. Not, they were still big songs, but not as big, so... That's kind of the risk with that, but otherwise, I like the soundtrack. I'll definitely be playing it on my radio show sooner or later. Guardians of the Galaxy 2 is a rare sequel, unless you count Captain America, who, in my opinion, I didn't like the first one that much, but then the second one was fantastic. This is so far two movies that are back-to-back -back really good. We didn't get that with Iron Man. We haven't gotten that with Thor. So, Guardians may just be the first trilogy in the Marvel movies that are all good. And no Age of Ultron wasn't that good either, so wah. Aside from an emotional dumping, a little bit of pace issue in the middle maybe, this movie does have a two plus hour time limit and you kind of feel it in the middle, but it has an intriguing concept, it has a cool idea. Kurt Russell's dope, I liked him in this movie. And Gunn does something that is different from the Marvel film. Sure, it's not completely different like it was more so with the Guardians because we are getting a little bit of what we had before, but it's still an enjoyable time. 
In the end, I will give Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 a 5 out of 7. It is a fun time. You definitely should go and watch it. Also, this is what we got for uh, seeing it in IMAX, my brother and I. This is a really wicked poster. I can't wait to put it up on the wall. Where will I put it? I have no idea. But either way, I enjoyed this movie. Something else that I also should say is Michael Rooker is fantastic in this movie. He's kind of an underselled actor, and if anything, he's kind of been trademarked to being this hillbilly character. And if anything, he is, again, sort of with Yondu, but Gunn really likes using Rooker, and he uses him to his full extent in this film, and Yondu is one of the best characters of this film by far. Also, the amount of cameos that you're going to see, they're pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this review. See you guys next time.